Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Imago Nutrition Podcast. My name is Mark, along with my illustrious co-host and registered dietitian extraordinaire, Danielle Glesney. This is the podcast where we answer your questions and give you practical nutrition strategies to help you and your family flourish. Speaking of families flourishing, Danielle, how are you doing up there? We're headed into spring break. I can't remember. It's not your spring break up there in the St. Louis area, or is it? No, next week. No. Next week. Okay. We're a week ahead of you. So yeah, all all my kids are roaming around the house right now. So um, we're in full, full spring break mode. No massive plans. I'm still working through the week, but we'll see what the week brings us. So yeah. <clears throat> all right. Well, if you are someone who is wondering about maybe the differences of the recommendations for full fat versus low fat dairy, this will be ho- hopefully a um, really insightful, um, easily digestible uh, episode. Uh, might even be fairly short, uh, which we don't do often, mostly because I like to talk. Danielle is laughing if you can't see her um, because <laughs> I talk about doing shorter podcasts and then I do podcasts and just keep talking. So with that, um, and there is a bit of you know discussion about this out there, um, candidly, with the rise of carnivore trend and carnivore influencers, which are now touting a lot of full fat uh, products in their diet. And so I think that we've come through a low fat phase in the, in the country. I think it was around the '90s ish. You, you know, everything was touted as no fat, low fat. Of course, they were just slipping in a lot more sugar to keep it tasty. Um, And now we're in just a little bit of kind of like, no, full fat. It's all about the fat. Lots of fat. Fat's good. We've been told everything wrong, you know, by the government for decades now. So a bit of confusion on this. So we'll talk a little bit about it. And if you have a question or if you have any one of these areas in life where you keep hearing these conflicting messages or, you know, you heard one thing for years and now you're hearing another thing. Please feel free to ask us um, a question. We would love to consider that for a topic of a future episode. You can do that by going to our website, imagonutrition.com, I-M-A-G-O nutrition.com slash podcast. You can submit your question there. As I said, we will consider it as a topic for a future episode. And so with that, we are getting back to the core uh, of our podcast, which is answering questions from listeners. And so we've got one today. Kate in Missouri, and I'll read her full question. <clears throat> Kate in Missouri asked, what is the recommendation on full fat versus low fat dairy? Okay, so that's kind of the question. And then I love that she gives a little bit of context. She said specifically, in terms of a diet that may contain on average one serving of either milk or Greek yogurt per day. Okay, so what is the recommendation on full fat versus low fat dairy? Danielle, what are your thoughts on this? Okay. So I guess to start with just answering the question directly, I recommend low fat dairy. And the reason I do is because dairy is from the animal and for heart health, um, we want not a low fat diet, but we want our fat to come from the plant and not the animal. Um, and so that is the reason I, um, myself choose low fat dairy, but also recommend low fat dairy and getting our fat, um, from the plants most often. So that statement that you said, um, you know, earlier, um, with low fat, that's what I hear all the time. Low fat products are going to be full of sugar and that's why I should choose the full fat. Um, I would say not necessarily, You know, I think when you think about the context of this question, like she said, you're, you know, having one serving essentially of dairy, Um, you know, we don't need to be worried about how much added sugar, you can definitely check the label and choose ones that are lower in added sugar. Um, But I think that is the biggest thing of why people want the whole fat. And then secondly, because they've heard about how much fat is good for your brain. And that fat is not from the animal. That fat that is good for your brain is from the plant. So that's in that Mediterranean style of eating. I just did a presentation a couple of weeks ago about um, brain health and how to, you know, maintain um, your mind sharp as long as you can. And that is, again, not recommending full fat dairy. That is recommending fat from plants. So avocados, nuts and seeds, um, things like that. So when you think about dairy, 
Well, I'll ask you, Mark, is there anything you want to add before we talk about dairy a little bit more? No, that's really it. I mean, with my clients for, you know, 16 plus years now, I've been saying low to no fat, you know, uh, is kind of the recommendation. So uh, for a lot of different reasons, you know, we, we don't need to go into all the unsaturated versus saturated, but we also want, we know that we want to be keeping our saturated fats low, right? Mm-hmm. And so those interact with, of course, dietary cholesterol. That's why we see things like, you know, increase in cholesterol, that's not specifically, the research has shown us not specifically from intaking cholesterol, it's from the interaction with saturated fat. So when you intake animal products that have cholesterol, because only cholesterol or cholesterol is only found in animals, um, and it interacts with saturated fat, we see that's where there's an increase in blood cholesterol, not just the intake of cholesterol. So for a couple different reasons, couple different dimensions, yep, we low, we like low to no fat dairy. I do, I do non-fat Greek yogurt with blueberries, sometimes a little honey, some chia seeds. Um, I do it a couple different ways, but almost every day. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. the low fat. And so I do remember transitioning, you know, when I got into, I think around college, kind of getting out of the home, kind of getting out of like, you know, childhood habits and stuff and started moving my milk toward, you know, no fat milk and then started exploring yogurts a little bit more. So it's a little bit of a transition, but you're, as we've said before on this podcast, your taste buds will, you know, transition along and there's lots of terrific ways you can spruce up, you know, um, even some non-fat Greek yogurt to make it super tasty. Again, I like blueberries and honey and seeds, et cetera. So yeah. yep. Low to no, no fat is, is generally the recommendation. Yeah. So you get, you know, obviously some lower calorie intake for that great protein source, but, um, another reason we choose dairy, um, is for calcium. And, um, mm-hmm. so thinking about, you know, one serving a day, you could even increase that a little bit, unless you want to make sure you're getting some calcium sources from non-dairy foods. Um, so some non-dairy calcium sources would be something like, um, chia seeds, kale, turnip greens, spinach, soybeans, tofu made with calcium, um, beans. I mean, there's quite a list, um, but you know, you're going to have a lot of plant foods. Broccoli is another one. Um, you can find also some fortified foods. So if you're already using orange juice, you might as well make sure it has some calcium fortification in there. Um, and so, so yeah, that's one reason we choose dairy. Another reason is vitamin D. Um, that's a Mm -hmm. low, um, there's low, uh, sources of vitamin D in our diet. So, um, some yogurts have vitamin D and some do not. Um, so I would say almost very few have, um, calcium, uh, sorry, vitamin D in your yogurt, but obviously milk is a good source of vitamin D. It doesn't mean you have to have the full fat milk to get that vitamin D. And then lastly, we choose calcium, sorry, dairy, um, specifically yogurt for those probiotics. So when you're looking at your yogurt, try to turn over the label and look at the ingredient list and see how many probiotics are listed. So if you can find three bacteria names are very long, like lactobacillus, um, you want to count how many there are. And if there's three or more, that's a great source. If it's not listed, it's more like pudding. So you're not going to get your probiotic source, but you will possibly get some calcium. Um, and then, um, sometimes it will just say how many live and active culture. So we'll just to say six live and active cultures. So you don't have to look and count the, the bacteria names. Um, and then lastly, you know, when you're considering what kind of yogurt to choose, you can look at how much added sugar, um, mm-hmm. and choose either the one that's lowest in added sugar. Um, and then you could, um, if you don't like the taste of that, you could choose the one that you do like, and then mix it half and half with plain yogurt because the plain yogurt is not going to have added sugar. Um, so there's a variety of ways to get your taste buds adjusted to that, um, taste change. Um, if you find that yogurt has zero grams of added sugar and it is flavored, that means they are using a sugar substitute. So just that you're aware of that doesn't, that could be your preference. Um, so just sometimes people, you know, don't realize that that's in their, in their food. Um, and so those are the things that I look at when I'm looking at yogurt and, um, the last thing protein, it's a great source of protein. It 
yogurt and milk. Um, so one thing to think about is um, cow's milk versus plant-based milk. You know, there's going to be a different in, uh, amount of protein in those. So make sure you're aware of that. So Very cool. Yeah. And this is this is part of our four pillars. So we teach, you know, four pillars of nutrition. First pillar being lean meat, seafood and dairy. Um, the second one being fruits and veggies. Third one being whole grains. Fourth one being nuts and seeds. So this is a little bit of an exploration on that, um, you know, back third of our first pillar is that lean meat, seafood and dairy. So lean cuts of meat, um, see various seafoods that are um, sometimes lean, but also sometimes like fatty fishes, oily fishes, et cetera. And then that dairy. So in that dairy component, we are, when working with clients, we're recommending that low to no fat dairy. So one of the pillars, incredible, you know, food, uh, incredible source of nutrients. So we love it for that. Like most things in, in nutrition, there's, there's a spectrum, right? So it's not just, do I include dairy or not? It's Let's talk about what kind of dairy. Do I include meat or not? Let's talk about what kind of meat, you know. Um, and so like many things, uh, it's, it's a spectrum. And so there's a lot more room for freedom for you about your preference. But in terms of the recommendation, those are, those are some of the articulated reasons why we would generally guide someone toward low to no fat dairy. So well done. We did it in under 12 minutes, Danielle. And I, I still, <laughs> I mean... Your, yours was the, the gold in there. Mine was a little bit of extra fluff, but um, thanks for exploring that. And so hopefully this was helpful, Kate, if you're listening. Thanks for sending that question. Again, if you have a question, feel free to shoot it to us by, headed over, by heading over to imagonutrition.com slash podcast. Uh, if we can help in any way or if you have a personal context that you'd like to discuss with us on dairy or any other nutrition question, if you've got goals this year, um, please reach out. Would love to see if it's a good fit for us to be able to help you. Uh, we both do one-on-one -on -one coaching. We also do group, you know, environments and classes, et cetera. So we've got resources available that we can help you with. Uh, if you'd like to check out our website, it's imagonutrition.com. You can go to slash contact if you're just looking to get in touch with us. So with that, we'd love for you to subscribe to the podcast. Um, drop us a review. Hey, let us know if you like the shorter episode or if you'd like Mark to ramble for 50 more minutes. Um, and so <laughs> it's not going to be a review. Um, and uh, we'd also love if you shared this with a friend. The reason we put this on for free, of course, is to help as many people as possible optimize their nutrition. So with that, you can follow us on social media. We're across all the major platforms at Imago Nutrition. That's I-M-A-G-O Nutrition. And as always, we'd like to thank our uh theme song i was gonna say our band it's not our band the band happy pill for our theme song think about food we'll see you next time